This is what Kazan looked just a few days ago. It's springtime and Akbars has made it to the Gagarin Cup playoffs. It was here where one of the most exciting first round games took place. It was here where Tatarstan Capital Team met Siberian Capital Team. Sibir won Game 1 of the series on the road and that gave him a great boost of confidence before Game 2. Agbars needs to get a win tonight to get a split at home, but it's not going to be an easy task as Sibir has a 6 foot 7 Finnish giant Mikko Koskinen in net. On that night Koskinen was taking part in the warm-up with everyone else. He was in a rather cheerful mood. Sibir's general manager was nervous yet satisfied. His team got one win on the road already. Going 2 for 2 to start the series would be amazing. Sibir is a hard-working team. They battle hard for every inch of the ice, says Akbar's forward Vladimir Kacha. They're a good team. They don't have superstars, but they don't have bad players either. They're well balanced. Everyone knows they gotta battle hard to get a spot on the team, and they really want to win. Kazan likes fans for the series. Akbar's doesn't have any sort of rivalry with Sibir, so none of the first two games were sold out. Team management tried to lure the fans in, but they didn't do so well. Akbar's management was heavily criticized for a low ticket revenue and they know about it. The whole music band idea just didn't pan out. The fans are more into hockey than anything else. But this game was one of the greatest so far in the playoffs. It all started with Sibir opening the score just 15 seconds into the first. Sibir knew Akbar's goalie Emil Garipov was playing his first career KHL playoff game. They had to give him a little test, and it worked. It's never easy to come back in the game when you get scored in the first shot. I was able to focus though, says Garipa. I had to change my game a little bit, play a little different, and it worked out great. I worked hard with my coaches to get here. We'll see what I can achieve by the end of the season. It looked like game one had never ended. Right from the get-go, Akbars was forced to look for a game-tying goal. Akbars has a lot of skilled players on the team. They're able to apply different strategies, but honestly speaking, all their rushes seem to follow simple philosophy. Crash the net. We knew we should do everything to avoid going into game three losing 2 nothing, says defenseman Alexander Osipov. And it went from bad to worse as Dmitry Kugrushev scored in a power play to make it 2 nothing severe. Garipov didn't look strong on that play again. He could cut the tension with a knife after that at the arena and especially on Akbar's bench. Alexander Norden was calling the game for local TV station and just like thousands of his viewers, he saw that Akbar's had no keys to Sibir's defense. Petrozhalek feeds to Petrov, off to Tereshenko now, shoots, sticks up in the air, the puck is loose and it's picked up by Petrov again. Nice move by Petrov, back to the blue line and the shot goes wide. Akbar's assistant coach Mikhail Sarmatin was guiding his team from the press box. A nerve-wracking game for him and the entire coaching staff of the home team. Their future with the club was on the line. Valery Belov and his assistants are on electric chairs and they know it. There's Anton Fedorov, a fan who is difficult to ignore. Every KHL goalie turns his head looking for him at least once when they play in Kazan. Making goal is mad is his favorite pastime. These days they even skate to the glass before the puck drop just to give me a piece of their mind, says Fedorov with a laugh. Even Kuska, that's right, I call Koskinen Kuska now, I gave him a Russian name, did this tonight. 
They trail 2-0 after 40. Sure hope they can come back in the third. Interestingly enough, Fedorov has a PhD in medicine, yet he yelled on top of his lungs trying to get Koskinen off his focus. Koskinen has been amazing in the series, to be honest with you. Must be because I gave him a Russian name. Koskinen has been excellent so far. He made a lot of huge saves for Sibir. I believe we can beat him though. We just have to focus on getting the puck into the net. After game one, Akbars has made a few roster moves. The most significant one turned out to be putting Alexander Osipov to Nikolai Belov on the second defensive pairing. And it was Osipov who slid Sibir's lead with a howitzer, 2-1. We didn't change our strategy coming into game 2. We played the same game, but everyone was a little extra motivated after losing in game 1. The biggest change was our mentality. Whenever you can't seem to score, you get upset. It eats you from within. And then you finally find the back of the net, and that gets you going even more. In the final frame, Akbars was all over Sibir, pure domination, and with just a minute left on the clock in regulation, Mikhail Varnikov tied the game up from in tight, 2-2. That goal has certainly lifted our spirit and that's what probably helped us in overtime. Besides, we listened to our coach, stick to the game plan and it worked out just fine. Forget everything you just witnessed. All the stats, all the plays, all the goals, because now none of it matters. Whoever has the biggest heart is going to win the overtime. This is the real playoffs now. My voice is husky and it's all because of that. Even in game one they didn't yet feel the taste of the playoffs. Now they're gonna duke it out in overtime and that's what playoff hockey is all about. It's a battle. It's not a regular season game anymore. In overtime, Akbars waited for the chance and they got rewarded for that. Sibir collapsed in the round end and Alexander Osipov beat Koskinen from the doorstep. That was Osipov's biggest night on Akbars so far. So far it's definitely my biggest game here. I'm happy we won such an emotional game. Now I have to work harder, improve my game and play a bigger role on the team. As for the game winner, it was just one of those offensive rushes where a defenseman has a right to drop low. Nothing special. Yanni Passanen put the puck on net hoping for a rebound and that's exactly what happened. My job was pretty easy after that. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous heading into overtime. It was my first career KHL playoff game and it went to overtime. The guys did a great job out there and got us the win. Akbar's backup goalie Konstantin Barulin yelled something at Koskinen as the game ended. This night I was painted red, white and green. We found a way to come back. We show we can play as a team. It was a pretty big deal for us that we scored three goals on Koskinen. He's a big guy, hard to score on. 3-2 overtime final. Akbars got back on track, got their confidence up and the series moved to Novosibirsk. Akbars proved once again they know what it takes to get a W in the playoffs. Fans and media criticize us for not being able to come back when we're losing. I admit we had this problem, says Akbar's head coach Valerie Bellow. 
but we won tonight and that should help us down the road. But it didn't. Agbars lost the series to Sibir in six games. Ironically, they were up 2-0 in game six in Novosibirsk after 40 minutes of play, only to lose it in overtime. Regardless of the fact, game two of the series was still one of the best KHL playoffs games so far this season. Sibir lives on and they will face Metalog Magnitogorsk in round two. As for Akbars, they got eliminated for the first time in the KHL history in the first round. This season is just full of surprises.